ਖੜਾ ਟੁਡੇ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਇਨਵਾਈਟਡ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਐਨ ਐਸ ਹਰੀਨਾ ਰਾਇਨਾ ਦ ਚੇਅਰਮੈਨ ਆਫ ਦ ਡਿਪਾਰਟਮੈਂਟ ਆਫ ਲਾਇਬ੍ਰੇਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਇਨਫੋਰਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਸਾਇੰਸ ਯੂਨੀਵਰਸਿਟੀ ਆਫ ਮਾਈਸੂਰ ਮਾਈਸੂਰ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ देयर इज नो नीड ऑफ ਮਚ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਕਸ਼ਨ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਵੈਲ ਨੋਨ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਇਨ ਦ ਫੀਲਡ ਆਫ ਲਾਇਬ੍ਰੇਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਇਨਫੋਰਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਸਾਇੰਸ ਆ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਹੀ ਗ੍ਰੈਜੂਏਟਡ uh his bsc okay a degree from yuvarajas college then mlc and a phd from university of mysore and pgdca from sjc uh, mysore he worked as a junior uh, uh, information officer at national law school university bangalore then he moved to igno uh, there he served as a assistant librarian nearly 6 years then in the year 1999 he joined uh mysore university uh, as a lecturer since 2003 is working as a uh, professor in the department uh he is having that's why he is having very rich experience uh his specialization is uh, it uh, and and uh, metadata uh, then classification etc so is uh, there are many academic distinctions to his credit uh he got bn raju memorial gold medal from university of mysore mysore for securing first rank in blic uh, in the year 1986 uh state award from the director of youth services and sports government of uh, karnataka for securing first rank in blic examination so then sr ranganathan memorial gold medal from university of mysore uh then we can see that is uh, he got in the in year 1987 then uh, first uh, then he awarded ugc research fellow for conducting full time research in library and information science in the year 1988 then awarded a traveling fellow fellowship by the australian research council and consortia of uh, australian universities under the project south asia renovating national collection in the year 1998 and so he visited australia under this uh, program for 21 days 2011 emerald indian lis research fund award highly commanded research award for the project proposal entitled use of social network sites and its uh, effects effect on students of engineering colleges in mysore city and explanatory study so i already told he is having uh, both uh, very good uh, experience both in teaching as well as uh, uh, administration uh he served as uh, along with the uh, serving as a teacher in the department i told he served as a, a private secretary to vice chancellor university of mysore from uh, 9th may 2011 to 10th uh, december 2012 that time professor vice uh, talwar sir uh, was uh, serving as vice chancellor then uh, he served as a nodal officer of university of mysore to communicate with the media from 14th november 2011 to 10th december 2012 and a coordinator of ugc rusa and nirf projects uh, from may 9 2019 to till date and uh, he served as a, the director uh, director of uh, iqac of the university of mysore mysore uh, i think uh, two days back itself he uh, resigned for that i think nearly three years he successfully uh, they served there and uh, uh, under his able guidance uh, we uh, went for the snack and uh, uh, we got very very good this uh, results also and for that uh, uh, the, the major contribution is uh, from harinan sir only he, he day and night he served uh, for the university for getting the uh, higher scores and he is uh, uh, already successfully uh, uh, completed uh, i think uh, 10 phds 7 mphil uh, more than this 50 uh, mlsc dissertations he is having uh, one, more than 140 publications uh, written 20 self instructional materials and uh, uh, there are more than 70 invited uh, lectures he uh, delivered in various parts of uh, india and he is member of uh, various uh, editorial Uh, committees okay then uh, consultant to 
uh, more than 10 institutions uh, uh, in uh, in uh, uh, Mysore and uh, uh, other places of uh, uh, Karnataka. So uh, this is, I think, the brief uh, uh, introduction about because uh, it is very difficult to tell because he's having more than 50 uh, pages of uh, lengthy uh, biodata and that much uh, credits uh, he's having, uh, that much uh, popular teacher. He's a very good uh, teacher, uh, contributing highly for the development of uh, the department and the university uh, and also uh, to the profession. So uh, he's a very good friend of uh, uh, ours, uh, may, may not only mine, because in, uh, all, in our department. So uh, now uh, he's uh, presently the chairman, the chairman of uh, not only this uh, department, but also the BOS also. Uh, on behalf of uh, the uh, HRDC uh, and uh, university, because he's serving here, university and HRDC, and my uh, personal behalf, I wholeheartedly welcome Professor N.S. Harinan, sir, uh, to deliver a lecture uh, in uh, this uh, 26th uh, refresher course. Uh, welcome you, sir. Professor is... Uh, Professor? Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so okay. much. Uh, okay. Welcome you, sir. Okay. Sir will deliver lecture on uh, the recent trends in metadata. Uh, over to Professor. Uh, uh, sir. Okay. Okay. We can continue, sir. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, uh, Chandrasekhara, for your very generous uh, and elaborate uh, introduction. I thought it would be brief, uh, and uh, you have made it uh, really elaborative and uh, uh, raised the bar uh, for me uh, because I have to meet the expectations uh, the, uh, of all the uh, resource persons. Uh, all the all the, all the part, participants. Uh, now, uh, just give me one minute time. I will switch over to. I will share my presentation. Uh, whether the full screen is visible? Uh, yes, visible, sir. Sir, visible, sir. Okay. So, I will be talking about uh, today current trends in uh, metadata standards. So when I mean uh, metadata standards, I will be talking of uh, cataloging standards. Because it is current uh, trends, the current terminology I have to use, uh, that is the reason why I have used the word metadata in, in place of uh, cataloging. Uh, probably for librarians like you and me, uh, the word cataloging is more uh, uh, nearer and more appealing, uh, but still for the point of change, I have uh, used the word uh, metadata standards. Uh, when I say I will be speaking of uh, uh, cataloging, uh, some of you may be thinking that uh, uh, why cataloging? Uh, that too, uh, many of you, uh, or most of you are very experienced librarians and is there anything that uh, really need to be told about cataloging? We have uh, really uh, learned a, a lot of things uh, in our BLAC or MLAC classes in cataloging and we have been practicing cataloging. So is there anything uh, that we need to do? Uh, am I audible to all of you? Yeah. Audible, sir. Audible. Yes, sir. Okay. Audible. okay, thank you, thank you. So, uh, under this pretext, uh, I just wanted to tell that uh, recently I visited, uh, uh, I went uh, to one of the institute uh, as a resource person uh, to talk about uh, the uh, cataloging. I was told that uh, cataloging is not a part of uh, the uh, general job description of uh, the librarians at all. So I was taken aback. If librarians like you and me uh, don't catalog, classify uh, the collection, who else in the world should do this? Uh, in fact, uh, they, uh, then uh, I just asked them, uh, what are the uh, activities that they do? They really do 
cataloging, but uh, they don't want to call it as cataloging. Uh, and uh, they think that uh, uh, if we enter the data in computer, it is not cataloging. Uh, so many uh, or a few librarians have that uh, impression that uh, because of the introduction of the computers and our library automation, uh, we don't uh, need cataloging or classification anymore. That is a myth. It's a wrong notion. In fact, we need more than ever before, in fact. Uh, so we need to understand uh, what exactly is cataloging, or why it happens like that. Uh, because when we talk about cataloging, we think still think of uh, uh, that uh, you know, obsolete way of uh, uh, cataloging the materials that is using uh, uh, three by uh, three by five cards. So three by four, we equate cataloging with uh, three by five cards. Uh, that's what we think that it, it is cataloging, but it is not. So the data entry, the data population that we do in the database is nothing but uh, the cataloging. We need to describe our resources. Then only the, any system, uh, computerized system can handle it well. So, so cataloging doesn't necessarily mean uh, three by five card, which is anyway has become obsolete. Uh, now, with this uh, background, let me uh, 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 let me talk today about some of the current uh, uh, trends in uh, cataloging or metadata standards. Uh, I'll be basically touching upon two such standards, uh, uh, such as uh, FRBR and uh, RDA. Uh, FRBR stands for uh, you know, functional requirement for bibliographic uh, records and uh, RDA stands for resource description and access. These are the two uh, uh, standards which I will be touching upon uh, today. Uh, so there are other standards also uh, for want of time, I'm not able to uh, uh, dwell upon uh, those standards in this presentation. Uh, so with this background, let me uh, move ahead. Uh, why we need to uh, change to the newer standard uh, and newer way of cataloging. So let me demonstrate this first uh, through the WAPAX that we have been using. And most of our WAPAX uh, um, look like the Library of Congress uh, uh, WAPAC and uh, the Ferberized uh, WAPAC has certain uh, advantages which uh, I'm going to show you uh, right away. Uh, in fact, let us uh, try to demonstrate uh, the advantage of uh, uh, using RDA or FRBR uh, in our cataloging system. Uh, so first, let us look at uh, uh, how the record, catalog records look like in uh, uh, a traditional uh, cataloging uh, system. So I'm uh, going to the ca LOC catalog and searching for, uh, say, some Malgudi days, uh, uh, the work on Malgudi days. So you can see over here, uh, let me, okay. So you can see here, uh, there are uh, seven records uh, pertaining to Malgudi days. And uh, th this is a film or video, this is a book and uh, the other edition of uh, the uh, book and so on and so forth. What I mean to say is we are looking for the work we uh, called Malgudi days which is a single work and different editions may be there, but uh, we, we, we expect, anybody would expect only single record with different uh, editions separately, but uh, the, even the Library of Congress uh, catalog doesn't show that way because the data that is stored uh, earlier uh, doesn't allow the catalog uh, software to display that way. So uh, for the sake of comparison, 
we will go to the future WAPAC, which is uh, called Ferberized WAPAC. Uh, it is called Ferberized WAPAC because it is uh, FRBR compatible WAPACs. That means FRBR principles are uh, incorporated in the uh, WAPAC. So let me uh, go to that particular uh, um, wildcat.org uh, uh, and uh, take uh, one of the novels, Allies Adventures in uh, uh, Wonderland. I'm just uh, clicking on that. Uh, it is searching for that. Uh, you can see over here that only one record is displayed. And if you want to see the different editions, etc., you click over here and you will get different editions and there are uh, uh, 2.4k uh, print books and three, uh, 370 uh, ebooks microforms etc etc this process of collocation what we call collocation by work was ignored uh, for the reasons best known to the automation uh, people uh, in the earlier packs so that has been uh, identified and reincorporated uh, in uh, FRBR and RDA. So when we talk about um, RDA, um, in fact, I just wanted to uh, uh, tell you about why we need to talk about RDA in this refresher course. Uh, you can see the structure, the, uh, the table of contents of uh, uh, RDA. Uh, which has got uh, uh, 10 sections. So you, you, you can see here, uh, I, I will read out uh, uh, some of the sections, uh, uh, section headings, like uh, so section one deals with manifestation and item, section two deals with uh, work uh, and uh, uh, expression, section three uh, deals with, uh, um, and deals with person, family, corporate body, et cetera. And uh, section four, uh, section five deals with uh, work, expression, manifestation, item, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, on the other hand, the AACR2 structure it has only two parts. And the first part uh, uh, contains thirteen chapters. Uh, they give the rules uh, by categories, uh, item types, and twenty-one to 26, the, uh, the, the, the part two contains the rules related to headings, uniform titles, and references. So at the beginning itself, uh, at the superficial level itself, you can see that there's a lot of terminological changes between AACR2 and RDA. So RDA, in AACR2, you don't find the words like manifestation, item, work, expression, et cetera, et cetera, which we need to learn, which we need to understand. Uh, so uh, RDA, for that matter, is an extension, is a next version of AACR2. So the next version of AACR2 is not called AACR3, but it is called RDA. But there is a lot of drastic paradigm shift uh, in the uh, in the code. So that is the reason why I just uh, uh, showed you the content page. I do have uh, the uh, RDA book, uh, RDA uh, uh, rules with me. Uh, this is the one. I hope you are, you are able to uh, see it uh, now. In fact, uh, uh, RDA is prepared for digital online use. So uh, if it is in digital form, it is called RDA toolkit. RDA toolkit and most of the Western libraries are using RDA toolkit and uh, um, only a few Indian libraries might be using RDA to toolkit as of now. And it is our responsibility uh, to implement uh, uh, RDA uh, at least from uh, now onwards. We are not afford to uh, ignore 
the advances made in the cataloging as far as uh, uh, the RDA is concerned. Okay. Uh, now, uh, I'm, uh, in order to appreciate uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, importance of RDA, we have to have some history, uh, we have to learn something, uh, some history of uh, uh, cataloging and also uh, we have to be aware of uh, uh, some jargons uh, and also we have to have basic knowledge of uh, LRM, which is a new edition of uh, FRBR. In 1999, FRBR was published by IFLA. And in 2016, uh, a consolidated uh, uh, code was published by name LRM. LRM stands for uh, Library Reference Model. Uh, and RDA uh, bases its rules and uh, regulations on uh, LRM or FRBR, if you want to say like that. Okay. And uh, uh, let me start with uh, uh, the historical catalog, and then finally we will come to uh, RDA and uh, try to understand uh, RDA uh, from that perspective. Uh, catalog, when we say uh, <clears throat> catalog, cataloging, cataloging is the process of creation of catalog records. So the, com the, the, the collection of catalog records in, uh, in a particular institute is called catalog, but we know it. So when we want to talk about catalog, uh, we tend to think that it is a list of uh, items held by a library. Uh, it, there's nothing wrong. Even today, the catalog stands for uh, with the same meaning. And uh, if you look, look back uh, into the pages of history, uh, you can find that uh, the Sumerian tablets uh, as early as 2000 BC uh, was the first uh, uh, catalog list that we had. And it contained uh, uh, some 62 uh, titles and uh, out of which only 24 uh, titles are uh, now uh, available to the humankind now. And, uh, uh, Callimachus, uh, a scholar from Alexandria, uh, has published what he calls Penicus. Uh, so it is called list of works as early as 2000, uh, uh, two, uh, 250 BC. And Greek uh, scholars were the first to attempt uh, to create author, title, subject entries. Uh, so all these things which we have learned uh, in our uh, uh, BLA, CR, MLA, C classes. And uh, till 17th century, not uh, a significant uh, development was uh, noticed uh, in the history of cataloging. And uh, the catalog quotes uh, uh, started to appear late 18th cent, uh, century or uh, 19th century. And uh, there is a need, the catalogers of those days, they realize the need for uh, what they call uh, cataloging code. Cataloging code are nothing but uh, the guidelines or the standards to which the description of items that need to be uh, adhered to. And they are the guiding principles for the uh, catalogers and uh, catalogers in preparation of uh, bibliographic record. And these guidelines or rules, uh, they help the cataloger in identify the description elements uh, and choice of uh, headings and rendering of the uh, description and uh, providing references and cross-references. And there are uh, many uh, cataloging quotes uh, uh, that are available for us, uh, starting from 1839 to 2016. LRM was published and uh, the new cataloging method is being uh, discussed uh, and is evolving that is called bib frame and probably uh, the catalogers are future years will have to adhere to uh, what is called a bib frame, which is a 
linked data uh, cataloging system. And uh, I, I think uh, another two, three years, uh, BigFrame will become uh, very popular, but I'm not going to touch upon BigFrame in this presentation. So uh, looking back to uh, the cataloging course, uh, the British 